You think you know JavaScript? I mean, it's quite logical to add 1 and 2 and a string 3 to get 33, right? Or, if you use the loose equality operator on two empty arrays, the result is false. But if you compare an empty array with a not an empty array, the result is true. And why even have a loose and strict equality operator? And let's not forget that in JavaScript, everything is an object, but somehow not everything is an object. Why is JavaScript so weird? At least that's what I hear very often from developers coming from object-oriented languages. Is it, though? As a JavaScript developer, you may not see these, let's say, quirks. Many of us start with YouTube or Udemy tutorials, and we don't ask these kinds of questions. We are just happy that the button renders in the right place and console logs test test final five if you click it. One develops a kind of professional blindness or learns to avoid or cope with these strange behaviors when they occur. Getting older and more mature as a monkey coder, I started to question things. Also, the last three years I worked with Java Spring Boot and gained a different skill set and perspective. For example, I had never heard of solid principles or polymorphism in a JavaScript-based project. But for a new role, I have to freshen up my JavaScript skills and started to dig deeper into the language itself and couldn't help but see some of its weird behavior. Motivated to find out why JavaScript is as it is, I had to do some in-depth research. So JavaScript is a loosely typed dynamic language. What does that mean? Let's look at an example. Loosely typed means there is no type declaration. In this case, X is a number. And dynamic means the type can change even at runtime. So we can change X to a string or a Boolean. And that's one of the many reasons you will have so much fun debugging JavaScript code. Can you believe that TypeScript was released in 2012? And until then, there was no real typing except for some lesser known packages. And now another thing I had to wrap my mind around. JavaScript is a prototypal language. What the heck is that? Here's an example of this. Animal is an object with the method eat, and dog is an object with the method bark. In JavaScript, we can now link these two objects into a prototype chain, so that animal is now a prototype of dog, and dog can bark, but also eat. In this example, the dog object doesn't have an eat method. JavaScript therefore searches in the object's prototype, in this case, animal. There it finds the method and executes it. Every object in JavaScript has an internal invisible link to its prototype. When you try to access a property or method of an object and it doesn't directly possess it, JavaScript automatically searches in the prototype object. If it doesn't find it there either, it continues searching in the prototype of the prototype and so on until it reaches the very top of the prototype chain. This mechanism is called the prototype chain. It's basically inheritance, but prototypal inheritance, where an object doesn't inherit from a class, but directly from another object, its prototype. Its inheritance is extremely flexible. You can create and manipulate objects at runtime and even change their prototype chain. For developers coming from class-based languages, however, this can often be confusing. So why is JavaScript the way it is? or, depending on who you ask, this weird. JavaScript was created by Brendan Eich at Netscape in just 10 days. Yes, 10 days. In May 1995, Gen Z wasn't even born yet. This intense time pressure explains many of the language's quirks. There simply wasn't enough time to design a fully featured, class-based programming language from scratch. At the time, Netscape and Sun Microsystems had an agreement. Java would be the big, professional language for complex web applications, while the scripting language Brendan Eich was building would serve as the small, simpler, little brother language for browsers. Yeah, right. Brendan Eich himself explained in an interview that he was required to design the language so that it would look like Java to benefit from Java's marketing popularity and not be too big for its britches meaning it shouldn't compete directly with Java. These political constraints made it practically impossible to implement a traditional class-based inheritance model. 
it would have made the language too complex and the overlap with Java too obvious. Instead of sticking closely to Java, Ike took inspiration from programming paradigms he personally favored. His main influences were Self, one of the earliest prototype-based languages. It showed that objects could inherit directly from other objects, no classes required. Scheme, a minimalist functional language and a dialect of Lisp from the 1970s. From Scheme, JavaScript inherited powerful concepts like first-class functions and closures. This means functions can be passed around like variables, stored, returned, and they remember the context in which they were created. In summary, JavaScript emerged as a prototype-based language born from a mix of corporate politics, brutal time pressure, and one man's taste in language design. The result? A language that stands apart from classical OOP and whose strength lies in its dynamic and flexible nature. Also, JavaScript was intentionally designed to be a language with a very low entry barrier, something that could gently guide beginners while still allowing experienced developers from other languages to jump in and be productive quickly. And to a certain extent, it succeeded. JavaScript consistently ranks among the most popular programming languages out there. Now, after extensive research, I see JavaScript in a completely different light. I'm not here to hate on it. In fact, I kind of love how weird it is. Weird in a way that wasn't planned. It just happened that way. Hopefully, you've also gained a new appreciation for this now fully grown and slightly chaotic puppy of a language. Oh, and remember that bizarre behavior from the beginning? Want the explanation? The expression is evaluated from left to right. First, 1 plus 2 gives 3. Then JavaScript notices it's adding a number to a string, so it coerces the number into a string and concatenates it. Thus, a string 3 plus a string 3 equals string 33. Totally makes sense, right? And this one? Why is that first one true? Let's break it down. Not an empty array evaluates to false because an empty array is a truthy value and the not operator negates it. So now we're comparing an empty array to false. JavaScript goes, okay, we're using loose equality here. Better coerce both sides to numbers. False becomes zero. An empty array also gets coerced into zero. So we end up with zero equals zero, therefore true. And this one is quite easy. Here, we're not comparing the content of the arrays, but whether they're the exact same object in memory. JavaScript isn't comparing values here. It's checking identity. So maybe it's not quite as weird as it first appears. Maybe not quite as strange as one thinks at first glance. JavaScript isn't broken, it's just misunderstood. So smash that like button if you're ready to embrace the chaos instead of fighting it. And don't forget to subscribe, I appreciate each and every one of you. Your move, monkey coder.